Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to install the Slice Mosquito Hotend in our Creality Ender 5 3D printer. My name is Alex, and this is Modified 3D. Taking a look at what you're gonna need for the install, obviously we are gonna need our hot end. This is the Slice Mosquito Hot End for 1.75 millimeter filament. It's not the Volcano, it's just the standard flow. We have the Slice uh, Nozzle Torque Wrench to ensure the correct torque. You're gonna need a thermistor because it does not come with one. This is the Slice High Temperature Thermistor. It's good for 450 Celsius. Also gonna need a nozzle because the Mosquito does not come with one. This is the Vandanium nozzle. It's basically a hardened uh, metal nozzle. Uh, this is the wires that come with the thermistor for hooking up to your printer. Obviously gonna need that. And we're gonna need some sort of system to mount it to our gantry. I'm gonna be using the Hero Me Generation 5 with a TH3D 5015 blower fan. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove the stock hot end shroud. It's just held in place by two bolts, one down here and one up there. Once we have that up, we can carefully take that out, remove our bolts and set our easy ABL sensor to the side. Next thing we can do is carefully remove our shroud and I'm gonna unplug the fan. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut free the part fan because we will not be using this fan. Next thing we can do is go ahead and unplug our heater cartridge. Now, if yours doesn't have a connection on it uh, because I did a custom heater install, it's probably hardwired in, so you can just go ahead and remove it from the bottom. Now would actually be a good time to go ahead and remove the heater cartridge itself. So we'll go ahead and loosen the screw. And we can carefully push out the heater cartridge. I just use an Allen key. And we'll set that to side. The next step is going to be to snip our thermistor wires uh, because we're not going to be using the stock thermistor. I'm just going to cut this zip tie up here that's holding this wire loom together. And the next thing to do is just remove this collar that holds in our PTFE tube. Now this may be hard to pull out because uh, it may be stuck in. Now if that's the case, we'll just go ahead and remove this fitting right here. And go ahead and just pull the whole thing right out. Now that we got that out of the way, we can go ahead and just remove our stock hot end by taking out these two bolts. And the stock hot end will come off just like that. What we can do now is go ahead and attach the heat break to our gantry mount. And this is the base portion of the Hero Me Gen 5. Just go ahead and use your two lawn bolts that are included with the kit. And this just slides right up in and those screw in up top. And just like that, the hot end is mounted. We can go ahead and finish putting in the rest of our hex nuts for the Hero Me Gen 5. I'm not gonna film too much of the Hero Me Gen 5 specific portion of the install because this is more or less an install on the Mosquito. But, um, and there's tons of other mounts that you can choose. You don't have to go with the Hero Me Gen 5. It's just one that I really like for modularity reasons. And it seems to work pretty well too, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish 
prepping this and we can move over to the printer for the rest of the install. All right, so I got my Hero Me Gen 5 assembled and we got the heat break and the mosquito in on the back side. We can go ahead and throw this on. It just gets secured in with two bolts, one right there and one right there, which is the same that the stock fan guard used. Looks like we're gonna have an issue with our uh, belt hitting the easy ABL mount. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse this so that the brass part is on the inside. Now that that's fixed, should be able to fit this without any issues. Just double checking that my belt tightness is good since we had to loosen that up. But now everything looks to be fitting flush and good so we can move on to the next step so the next thing to do is install our heater cartridge what i'm going to do is just clean off all this old uh, thermal paste off of it and then we can apply a new batch of thermal paste this comes with your uh, slice hot end it's boron nitride from slice engineering definitely great stuff but this is absolutely required. So go ahead and put a little bit on your heater cartridge and slide it in place. It just goes in the bottom and it's held in place by one set screw that also holds in place the thermistor. Make sure it's centered up and we can wipe away the old or all the excess paste. Next thing I'll do is insert our thermistor and I put a little bit of thermal paste on that as well. There's also a small little insert you're going to want to put in beforehand and that just acts as a spacer to take up a little bit of extra space needed um, and it'll help center up that thermistor but we can go ahead and put that in. And we'll go ahead and put the screw back in that holds everything in place. The thermistor and the uh, heater cartridge basically get sandwiched between two bolts, which I really like this style. It's definitely a lot nicer than the stock hot end style. Uh, and especially with the thermistor, those bead styles definitely have a lot of issues with wire placement and stuff like that. And we'll just make sure the other end is tight as well, which it is. And we'll let that thermal paste dry before doing anything else. While that thermal paste is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our TH3D silent fan from the stock uh, hot end carriage or stock fan mount. And we can go ahead and swap this over to the Hero Me Gen 5. So we got our fan in place. Next thing to do is just go ahead and plug it in. I'll also go ahead and hook up our hot end heater cartridge Now what we got to do is we still have to install our 5015 fan, which we'll do next. We have to put pins on this end for a JST connection, as well as on the 5015 side. So we'll do that as well. And then we're gonna have to solder on our connector 
for the thermistor wire and that'll just connect to the existing thermistor wires so that we can have our quick disconnect. Then we'll be ready to test. So I went ahead and took that off just so that I could solder on the JST on this side um, because my kit comes pre-pinned on the female ones and you pin your own male side. So anyways, it was just easier to solder the fan than it would be to solder uh, these wires uh, actually attached to the printer. So now what we can do is go ahead and strip these wires right here, put our pins on and connect our 5015 fan. We can go ahead and solder on our thermistor wires now. I went ahead and stripped both sides and slid some heat shrink on already. So with that being said, that's the last thing that we need to hook up. We can go ahead and finally address our easy ABL sensor by removing our old mount from it. And we can go ahead and install this in place. So the last thing that we have left to do now that we have our easy ABL mounted in place is just trim our PTFE tube just a tiny bit and we can screw in our PTFE fitting to the top of our mount. This just gets hand tightened in. We don't want to torque it down too much because um, we don't want to crack the printed part that it's getting screwed into. I did find it interesting that this screws directly into, or sorry, that it doesn't directly screw into the hot end, but rather it screws into uh, this part where there's a little gap, but I don't think that should affect performance at all. And then I'm just gonna take, oh, probably like a quarter inch off the bottom of this PTFE tube and using the cutters, We'll make sure we get a flush cut. And we can place our PTFE tube in. With that being said, everything's hooked up. We can go ahead and power on and test everything out, make sure that it works. Now, our thermistor is reading negative eight degrees instead of the correct 21. That's probably because the thermistor setting is potentially different in the firmware. Uh, it could also be an issue with our wiring. Uh, the only way to tell is we're gonna reflash our firmware and I know on there, uh, there's an option for putting in your own thermistor instead of using the Creality thermistor or TH3D one. So we'll go ahead and enter the correct value for the slice 450 degrees cartridge style thermistor and reflash our firmware using the TH3D Easy firmware. Uh, I've done plenty of videos on how to uh, do that, so I'm not gonna go ahead and show you guys that part, but we'll come back and see if that fixed it. If not, we'll address it by playing with the wiring. And just like that, we're reading correctly. You can see there, it's hovering between 19 and 20, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
obviously do a PID test on it, but that's definitely a lot better than before. Everything is looking good so far. The last thing to do is just install the nozzle. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a little bit of thermal paste on the threads, go ahead and put it in to the bottom of the heat break and use our torque wrench to torque it down. Then what we can do is heat the nozzle up, get it up to temp like 240, 245, and torque it down one final time just to ensure that everything's correctly tightened. Running a PID auto tune here. Uh, all you do is go ahead and go into your settings, the advanced settings, uh, configuration, temperature, and then PID auto tune and it will automatically cycle the temps for you and run that to make sure that you're getting accurate temperatures. So I did a quick PID tune and everything's working great afterwards. We'll go ahead and do a quick calibration print and play with any slicer settings that we need. But for that, I'll make a different video for tuning the Mosquito. Today's just gonna be for the install. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. And as always, if you wanna see more videos on how to modify your 3D printer, make sure to hit that subscribe button. My name's Alex, and this is Modified 3D.